Great stuff. Well, um, good morning, all. Um, welcome to uh, the fourth uh, Your Affordable Sales Team uh, session. So a couple of quick housekeeping points. Um, if you could, please just pop yourself on mute unless speaking. Um, be prepared to be hydrated. Um, have a notepad and pen to hand if you need. Um, and in terms of questions, uh, my understanding is that there's opportunity for questions um, at the breaks in each of the sessions uh, from presenters today. Um, and uh, that probably uh, takes us on just to speak a little bit about uh, your affordable sales team and then to introduce today's, uh, today's presenters. So um, your affordable sales team is a collaboration. Uh, it's between uh, Claire Lee of Venue Queen and Borrow My Garden, um, Kevin Holland and, and Martin Dempster of Trident Hospitality and myself, Julian T uh, of Compass Hotels Management. Uh, so we offer a suite of solutions for independent venues, hotels and hospitality establishments, uh, providing proactive support in sales, in representation, uh, in business strategy, in operational support across all facets of the business. I'm seeking to add value uh, wherever we can to your existing on-site team. Uh, this week, uh, Kevin, if we just move on a slide, if we could. Yeah, uh, slight technical problem. Sorry. That's all right. Well, this week, um, uh, as, as we get there, we're going to be uh, looking at, um, uh, at the particular, particularly timely um, topic uh, with uh, Leonard Curtis Business Solutions, um, looking at uh, business recovery, um, which I guess always uh, can be seen with a negative connotation, but in fact actually can be a, a very positive and proactive step to take in the life cycle of any business. Um, and um, the topics being looked at today are business recovery, um, looking at how insolvency can be avoided, time to pay arrangements, uh, and finance options as well. Uh, we're uh, very lucky to have uh, Donna Crompton, uh, Gary Kane and Rick Miller uh, from uh, Lenny Curtis Business Solutions. Uh, and I think uh, armed with that and with no further ado, we should hand over uh, to them uh, to uh, dive straight in and, and to begin in their presentation. We look forward to hearing it. Thank you very much. Julian. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Joanne Tipper from Leonard Curtis Business Solutions. Um, if you could pop through to the next slide, please, Kevin. So a little bit of background about Leonard Curtis. Um, we established 25 years as a, an insolvency practitioner. However, the company has evolved quite substantially over the, over the last 25 years. We currently have um, national office, uh, national offices of 18 spread up and down the country. Our furthest southern is Southampton uh, and the furthest north would be Glasgow. Um, Manchester would be our head office, our central office. Um, but we're dotted up and down the country, as I was saying. We've got 250 staff just, just in excess of now with 36 insolvency practitioners. Um, we're not part of an accountancy practice. So completely ind independent um, and uh, director led. And I suppose what makes us different than any other insolvency practice, then we do offer business recovery and insolvency avoidance wherever possible. Uh, we specialize in the SME market um, and we support primarily accountants, um, but through that, obviously working very closely with their client base. If you could take us through to the next slide, Kevin, please. Thank you. So the business journey essentially is what we would class as the life cycle of a business. Um, so it's essentially from the company formation, uh, which we would class as the, the inception of that company. Um, and then as obviously that grows, uh, we look at talking with our corporate finance team through growth and looking at investment. Uh, and as people have acquired businesses, we also have a, a, a team within uh, Leonard Curtis, LC Legal, um, and they would support with shareholder agreements, uh, mer mergers and acquisitions. Um, so, yeah, they, they would personally look after that from start through to finish. Um, but of course, as every business will experience at some point, there might be uh, there might be issues um, that they could do with support on and that's where other services that we uh, that we have within within Leonard Curtis they would be there to support you 
And fingers crossed you come out with a, uh, a solvent liquidation um, when you're ready to, to retire to the Bahamas and have your uh, little beach hut across there. And of course, uh, we can support with that as well. If you could pop the next slide, please, Kevin. So these are some of the services that we, we adopt throughout Leonard Curtis invariably to try and support businesses uh, throughout that life cycle of, of their journey from conception right through to through to exit. Um, if you could pop through to the next slide. So a little bit more, uh, Donna Crompton looks after uh, our Liverpool and Chester office, but I'll leave Donna to explain a little bit more about her role and how, uh, how she can support hospitality and other businesses. Thank you, Donna. Oh, um, hi. Um, that photograph was taken pre-lockdown. <coughs> <laughs> I looked happy then. Um, so my name is Donna Crompton. I am one of the directors of our Liverpool Merseyside Chester and North Wales officers. Um, my, my role is more specialised in insolvency, the insolvency side of the company. Um, generally, we have referrals from accountants who have clients that are struggling, i.e. could be the hotel business. We have been working with some suppliers of um, linen to the hotels quite recently. Um, so they will contact us, um, run through the accounts of the company, um, explaining which way they're struggling. Obviously, through the lockdown, it's pretty obvious right now why people are struggling, but in normal terms, um, people struggle in different ways. Um, we will then um, go and see the clients, um, but generally before that happens, we have a wealth of services that we can offer. So if it's on the funding side, because we have Gary Kane, he heads up our commercial, um, our REACH commercial finance, He's an independent um, financial brokerage who specialises in funding. So it's not just ourselves that will um, give advice. It's also um, Rick Miller who's also on. He specialises in time to pay and uh, financial assistance with employees with the RPO. So it's generally very much a team effort. Um, it's not all about insolvency um, and um, it's all about keeping the business afloat using our own services. I mean, it could be something simple of a shareholders dispute. Um, we have our legals on hand. It's, it's, it's a one stop shop where we can assist. Um, so generally the accountants that we deal with up and down the country, we deal with a lot in North Wales, Chester um, and Merseyside for my particular um, patch and um, they'll give us a call. Um, probably the worst time is when um, companies um, go underground and don't keep in contact with the accountant. Um, that's probably when it gets more worrying. Um, but we're here to help. Um, I'm constantly on the phone 24 hours a day. What we're getting a lot of now, um, well, so many phone calls a day, is the bounce back loan, where companies have taken the bounce back loan maybe shouldn't have taken it, maybe the turnover was not as it should have been. They've taken the bounce back loan and spent it unwisely. They might have a lovely house and a beautiful car parked outside, but we're coming out of, you know, we can see the light now. And that's where a lot of companies are struggling. So I would say if anyone is um, in need of um, advice um, on the insolvency side, we can get involved and it's not all about um, insolvency it's the help that you get that we can offer um, from our diverse company. Thank you. Gary, over to you. If you could just go through to the next slide, Kevin, please. No, <laughs> we've got technical issues. That, that, was, that was me pre-lockdown as well, that's my picture. <laughs> My ear is going quite a bit. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly pad a touch here. Um, so yeah, I, I run the um, Reach Commercial Finance, so part of the, the Leonard Curtis Group. Uh, we're a national commercial finance brokerage and we support each of the regional LC offices. I think the, the difference, as, as Donna highlighted really, you know, a lot of what we're about is trying to assist businesses. It doesn't have to be a distressed business for us. You know, uh, we, we, let's move to the next slide, please. Yeah, because that's uh, that was when I was happy as well. Um, but yeah, we're um, <clears throat> we're we're in a, a, a commercial finance brokerage, looking to help SME businesses. And I think for for us, it doesn't have to be a distressed lend. It can be 
any form of challenge really whether that's um, whether it's a positive challenge in that it's funding growth um, it could be slightly distressed in respect of you know late payments or bad debts etc it's anything really with a pound sign in front of it for, for an SME business and I think the, the key to us really we try to take an old-fashioned bank manager approach really get out to see the client even in, even in this this environment we are still seeing clients if, if they're comfortable with it uh, we are having zoom appointments etc but we, we try to get really under the hood of the business and a, and a good feel and understanding of what the business does how they do it and what the financial challenges are really because in order for us to deliver a, a flexible creative and I'm fairly prompt solution it's trying to address the problem in the right way. And I think Donna touched there about, about the bounce back loans. Obviously, we've seen tons and tons of inquiries on, on the, <clears throat> the larger C-bills um, scheme, as well as the bounce back. And, and often it's, it's a client coming to us for, for an order rather than letting us evaluate what options are available and what's the most appropriate. So for, for, for us... It is taking that time to better understand that business and the right funding product matched with the right lender. Uh, but clearly, since since Feb of last year, um, we have been absolutely bombarded with the Seabills inquiries. On a typical year, um, 2020 not being one, um, we look after or, or help um, over 250 clients each year with about 600 million of new funding. Um, so we've got quite a large portfolio of, of clients we do look after them we're, we're not sort of like sell and forget once we've once we've sourced uh, a, a solution for them we still make sure that they're happy and that that facility continues to work for them so that after sales service um, and I've, I've always wanted to say this ever since Boris did it uh, can I have the next slide please so how are we finding things right now like I say you know a, a lot of inquiries on on C bills and bounce back uh, at the very early stages, what what we did, which was right, you know, it was it was signposting those inquiries back to the the, the high street bank, uh, their own bank. Uh, we 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 assessed each each application to make sure it was fit for purpose, etc. And what we were doing really was we were just providing that service to our introducer base as well as the client, just so that they knew that we were here if if the lender didn't have that appetite. Um, obviously, there was a there was a big big flurry at the, at the at the front end. I think a lot of businesses that were I'd I'd argue a lot of the businesses that probably didn't really need it at the front at the front end. The, the banks were inundated with with inquiries, and they were getting beaten up really in the press in respect to their response times, etc. So I think they were they were helping a lot of businesses that didn't really need the assistance. You know, you looked at it; it was a strong balance sheet. You had cash at bank. And then the bank were writing, you know, big, big C bills lens um, because they wanted that they wanted to push that money out. What we are seeing now, a number of of cases now where businesses had like 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 I did to be honest, assumed that all of this was going to be a lot a lot shorter of a journey. Um, and you know, I think Donna's highlighted a lot of businesses have taken C bills or a bounce back. That period of of uncertainty has extended. And that cash has gone, whether it's the car that's in the drive or it's actually feeding the business. It's taken much, much longer to, uh, to, to get things up and running. I think we'll touch on it in a minute, but the, the, the roadmap is, is definitely encouraging businesses now to look forward um, rather than just fix a problem that they did have. So, um, yeah, a, a lot of what we do is with the independent providers, um, not necessarily the high street banks. And I think particularly in, in the hospitality space, I think you're going to find that, that that's where the uh, that's where the appetite for, for lending is going to be. Um, okay, next one, please. Um, I think regardless of, of of any financial product, good cash management is absolutely critical. So so credit control, getting getting that money in, get it in your bank uh, rather than in your uh, in in your customers. That that is absolutely critical to, to to anything. And I think it's something that that Donna will highlight, we highlight, Rick will highlight when he talks about his piece as well. Uh, I'll, I'll quickly rattle, rattle through uh, some, of the, some of the key schemes. As a, I think there's a couple of um, slides that are a little bit, bit chunky, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll fly through them. Uh, yeah, so the, 
the sea bills and the large sea bills and the bounce backs at, at the moment they've been extended obviously to to the 31st of march um i suspect furlough might get pushed on a little bit if if it does it might drag the the extension period for 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 these loan schemes with it as well so obviously the the, the key one under the bounce back if people are coming back for a top up the, the, the bounce back is is capped still at twenty five percent of that turnover. You know, it's, it's the it's the maximum of fifty grand or twenty five percent of your turnover. And if you do take a sea bills and you've got a bounce back, the sea bills has got to pay the bounce back off. So that needs to be considered if you if you do any cash flow management, etc. So uh, next one, please. What we'll do on this because um, this is like too much detail. Um, I think we'll probably. Um, share this with the with the attendees but that just gives you some some key bullet points about the uh about the various schemes so next one please um and then this is this is relevant so startup businesses so it, a, a startup you know it, it can be businesses that are less than two years old i think the expectation is as a number of changes in the coming months i think that 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 two year period might get extended then to three years and effectively it's a business loan sorry a personal loan for business purposes and it can be anything from 500 pounds up to 25 grand um, on a five-year term um, and each director can apply up to four so um, gov.uk website is really really good for that but we can help on the on the startup loan applications uh, next one please and yeah, so the other other sources of, of, of business, um, sometimes they, they, they are still relevant in the in the hospitality space, but invoice finance, asset based lending, we've just done, um, it says touch wood, just on a million pound um, property lend for a uh, for a pub chain. Um, I'm also looking at some invoice finance for um, the linen trade and food in the hospitality sector as well. I think what we're finding with the challenges in that sector at the minute um, is that we're, we're often having to look for additional security to make that lend work. Um, and I think really one of the keys, I think, is, is under the roadmap now, it's, it's about having that time to sort of, to, to plan and prepare for what the business is going to look like when it comes out of it. Um, you know, if, if you think of, having conversations with your customers and your suppliers to make sure that you're, that you're up and running, you're ready, and even just have some, um, some simple assumptions and some simple cash flow forecasts that highlight the peaks and troughs. And it, it should highlight to you if, if you're going to need some, some additional finance. So, uh, but by all means, I think our contact details will be here at the end and obviously open for, for any questions at the end as well. But um, it is a challenging sector that you're in, in, in respect of getting lender appetite. But we have we have had some success and it's the businesses that are, that are planning and that are preparing and they've got they've got relevant and accurate information to hand. So that's that's, that's me. I'll hand over to, uh, to Rick Miller now, please. Thank you, Gary. Move on to the next slide, please. Sure. Thanks very much. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending um, and thanks for your time. Uh, my name is Richard Miller, head up the corporate strategies team, part of the Lenny Curtis Business Solutions Group. Um, as uh, Joe and uh, Donna have mentioned initially, we actually look at a lot of credit and negotiations on behalf of businesses, but what we do specialise in and what we're well known for is um, it's time to pay arrangements with the HMRC. And it's mainly because a lot of businesses that we do come across will have some sort of issue with their MEU, um, or some sort of debt, or they've got some pending issue, potentially where they can foresee a cash hole. So, you know, similar to what Gary was saying, it's 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 key to manage the cash. And we've seen a lot of proactive directors, or we did see pre-pandemic um, coming to us with with a requirements for time to pay on 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 a, on, on future liabilities. Um, but in the main, we do look at, look at a lot of companies where they've actually built up some debt. And that's mainly because the referrals coming from uh, the accountants where they've taken advice from the accountants. And, and, and as the, uh, due to the reputation we've got within the industry, we're getting the uh, we're getting inquiries mainly from the accountants. As it sort of says on the slide, we're looking at roughly about one time to pay a week. Um, we probably see, probably speak to about four or five business owners each week. Um, from all sorts of sectors really um, 
you know, we're, we're uh, just true to our um, our approach and the way we deal with the, with each client and the way we speak to the HMRC. It sort of lends into how how we're achieving our high success rate at the moment. Um, 2019, r- roughly looking about 98% success rate. Last year, it was 100% success rate. Uh, and we looked at rescheduling, looked scheduled over 9.3 million in debt, but all types of debt from VAT, pay as you earn, corporation tax, uh, self assessments for you individuals as well. So it, it doesn't really matter what sort of level of debt it is, we, we can get involved in. And I suppose just to give you a bit of an idea of what we're seeing, um, I suppose what we saw sort of pre pandemic, um, we almost saw the HMRC dictating what clients could have in terms of time to pay. And that would be down to what stage of the collection process they're in with the revenue. So obviously the earlier, earlier the client gets in touch with the HMRC, the more likely they're gonna to have to secure a longer term arrangement. And the further it goes down the collection process towards enforcement proceedings, the HMRC will, will reduce our time scales. So we would tend to say, the revenue HMRC would tend to say 12 months would be the maximum time to pay. On the odd circumstance and the exceptional circumstances, the, re, you know, the revenue would give consideration over and above that. But since the pandemic, um, there are obviously lots of struggling businesses, all different types of sectors, um, some, some obviously worse than others. And obviously hospitality um, is, is, is one of those that's really been affected. And we've seen quite a few businesses over the last 12, 13 months. Um, they are very supportive of those sectors. Um, you know, we, we're uh, we're actually look we actually looked at a business um, September October last year. They were an events business, and probably seventy five percent of their events were, uh, you know, the the conferences and and uh, award ceremonies. The, the the remainder was sort of online events, but that that obviously that 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 conference side of the uh, business really got hit hard. And, you know, the 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 work the, the turnover dropped off a cliff overnight. Um, fortunately for that, for them, they had very understanding and supportive customers where they were happy to to to, to uh, leave the relevant deposit in place um, and 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 move the event and, and move with the events. And obviously, when when times when when we can get out and about again, they were happy to sort of keep that place uh, that deposit in place. Um, fortunately, and, and that business itself, um, you know, it never it never historically had any issues with HMRC. In the past, it's all been built up. All their areas have been built up during the pandemic. All VAT debt, roughly about 400k. And uh, as as we, with this particular client, um, we had some initial conversation with HMRC just to sound them out. We put them on notice in terms of what's what we're looking at in terms of the time to pay arrangements. And the HMRC were actually willing to look at something up to the up to the into the region of five year arrangements. So. We, uh, we sat down with a client, we looked at some projections, uh, cash flow forecasts, um, had, a, had a meeting with their accountants and advisors just to make sure ev- everything was in there and there's nothing, no skeletons in, in the closet coming out at a later date. Uh, and it, it was uh, it was the, the best proposal that the company could put forward in terms of, of those arrangements. And we, uh, throughout the period, throughout the process, we 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 kept uh, informing the HMRC of where things were up to, and once the time we were right to actually put forward the plan, um, we did that within within a couple of weeks, and the revenue actually uh, were actually very supportive of that business. We had a joint conversation with the business owner as well, just so they could get a, an understanding from where they, how they were feeling about life, and obviously what their what their concerns were. And with this with this business, we did uh, we did secure this five year arrangement. So, you know, it's 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 good to see um, that the HMRC are very supportive. Um, you know, as a rule, you know, for that type of arrangement, it, it, it's unprecedented. They would normally want it as I say within a twelve month arrangement, um, but ordinarily they would want to see some, you know, supporting documentation and some information around the balance sheet. You know, as as the company. The company done all they can to sweat the, the, the business assets. Um, you know, as a, as sort of Donna mentioned before, um, we very much work as a team. Um, so it's often that Donna picks the phone up to myself and say, I'm just looking at a client, they're, they're taking some insolvency advice from myself. But actually, uh, we've also discussed the alternatives, and time to pay is probably the best option initially. 
Um, so that's something where we'll come into it. And then similarly, you know, with, with Gary and the Reach team, um, I'll often pick up the phone to them and ask them if there's any, any funding out there to support the business. Because what we tend to find is, yeah, they have got HMRC problems, but actually there's a, there's a, there's a funding gap as well further down the line. So it's something that we're very much uh, keen to do. And, and similar to what Gary was saying as well, we, 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 we'll, we'll maintain that relationship with the client. Once we've got a time to pay, we'll keep in touch with them periodically. Because um, that's that's more important. We know we don't we don't want them to fall to, uh, on the plan. If there's any potential issues, we can flag that up with the HMRC and, and potentially vary that arrangement. Um, but, it's, but it's often that the, 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 the business owners that we tend to, tend to meet, um, they'll, they'll need some handholding and, and reassurance that there's always, there's always a way around it, um, providing we can communicate things with HMRC. But there's a couple of other points there worth noting. Um, you know, on the, on the larger debts, you know, we're seeing, as, as I said, we sit we deal with any all sorts of size of debts, but on the bigger side, a million plus, the MUR are uh, quite a, quite aggressive and reactive to that. So um, it's something to, to be mindful of for the, any, any, any bigger businesses out there that you, you, um, you're seeing. And then um, just the final point there, um, obviously the, with, with the enforcement action being on hold, which leads into the sort of long-term arrangements, the HMRC are issuing security notices, a bond requests basically for page one and VAT. Um, it's something to just watch out for if, 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 if there's any, any uh, side to those notice requiring for security. They are quite strongly worded letters, um, but they can be dealt with and appealed. Um, so if there's, if there's any, uh, any concerns about those or if, 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 if you want to have a chat, um, I think our details at the end of this slide on this slide. So feel free to give us a call because we've got a great success rate to, to not only just getting the time to pay, but secure to appealing those actual bond requests as well. Move on to the next slide, please. So just just uh, coming on to something um, that we've been looking at over the last four years. Um, it's basically if. The, if you know, if there's a business out there that are actually looking to downsize and restructure and uh, looking to make some redundancies, if they can't afford to make those redundancy costs through their existing facilities or by any, any other means, some secured loans, then the government the redundancy payment service will help them out with a loan. Um, it's all self focused and um, around job preservation and, and obviously from, 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 uh, from my point of view, insolvency avoidance. So that's that's key. That's the key message, really. If if that business is is effectively insolvent because of the cost of making redundancies, uh, and they can't source it through their facilities, this, this loan is ideal for them. It's something that's not really well known, and and that's one of the reasons why we sort of latched onto it about four years ago, is because the the, the redundancy payment service don't advertise it. Understandably, they're probably be inundated. Um, but there is quite a strict criteria to, to, to meeting to, to, to securing a loan. So it's so, similar to what we do with the time to pay is we'll sit down with the client and make sure um, there's a good, good chance of the client getting a loan. We'll run through the criteria, make sure they fit those, those key points. And then also review any financial projections that the clients may have. Obviously, that's a difficult point at this moment in time. Um, but to be fair to the Ludens Payment Service, they are very understanding and, and they are willing to, to accept sort of the caveats on the assumptions there. So if, um, you know, that's, that's something just to be mindful of that, that, that there is help out there. And, you know, the, the, the key points from the loan itself um, is it's, it's actually um, paid directly to, into the employee's account. So unlike the job retention scheme, obviously that's a grant, unlike the job retention scheme, that's those monies are paid into the bank account. These, these uh, monies are actually paid directly to individuals' accounts who've been made redundant. Then the loan then sits with the business. It's interest-free, um, so that's that's another plus point. Um, and generally, there's no security required from the business, and certainly for the limited companies, the director does not have to provide a PG. So um, we're, we're, we're always, at this moment in time, we're, we're securing loans and we're going up to the maximum of a three-year repayment period, which they allow. So it's something that's worth noting. Um, you know, I think particularly with everything that's going on at the moment, you know, you know, this is this is very much a topical discussion that I'm having quite a lot with it, with it, with our business owners and accountants. And as the uh, 
furlough and the job retention scheme is is withdrawn, whether it's at the end of April or it, whether it's you know, whether it's beyond that, feels like it's going to be on that in in, in in my view. But at some point, that owner managers are going to have to start to do some planning with the staff, and if they have to make some redundancies, then this loan is ideal for them. There's a bit of an example down there of, of a business that we're helping at the moment. They've got two hotels in there, but they've really been hit hard and they've had a lot of demand for refunds from customers, unfortunately. So um, they, they, are, they, have, they have had to look at making some redundancies back end of last year, um, but we were able to help them secure that loan through the redundancy payment service. Uh, and obviously, uh, hopefully that, that business will come back to previous levels of turnovers once, once the... Uh, once the sector starts to open again, the good thing is with this loan is it just it gets those uh, staff members with their entitlement for redundancy, and obviously keeps that business going, which is key. So that's uh, that's my section on it. Um, if there's any, if anyone's got any questions, um, I don't know if we're going to have a general discussion at the end, but um, probably just pass you back to Joanne. Thank you very much. Hey Donna, thanks Rick, thanks Gary. Um, yeah, the obviously the contact details are there. I can share them with uh, with obviously the team from uh, your affordable sales to be passed out through to anybody. Um, but what is important to say is that throughout the whole of the business, um, nobody judges. Um, we're open to having conversations with anybody. Um, and there is no such thing as a silly question. So please don't feel afraid to pick up the phone. If we can give you some, some good sound advice, obviously to keep the business operating or just to prevent, to prevent you from uh, having sleepless nights, it's worth just picking the phone up to any of the team. Um, and as we've, well, all of us have approached, if we can't help invariably there'll be somebody within the organization or some professional outside of the organization that can help so please don't be afraid to pick up the phone thank you i think well i mean that that, that was wonderful joanne donna gary rick thanks very much indeed um I, I, I have a couple of questions, but that's because <laughs> I generally have a couple of questions. And, and I love the preface. Thank you very much that there are no stupid questions, which will, which will, which will help my questions, no doubt. Um, but um, but just, just to get that going on, on a couple of points, um, I had uh, one question for Gary and then one for Rick. Um, Gary, just, just starting with a question for you first. Um, in, in terms of lending, we all know that the, that the sector um, uh, is viewed by banks, certainly in traditional lending form, in different ways at different times. Um, and we've gone from we've gone from uh, opportunities where uh, they're very happy to lend and very happy to expand, and then there's been huge contraction in terms of appetite. Um, and from what I can tell, we're at that point of contraction in terms of appetite again. And so, consequently, uh, I guess there's a chance that more stringent terms will be put in. Um, um, the banks will always back a dead cert, and there are no dead certs. So presumably we might be getting back to looking at more uh, PGs being put in um, or um, lower, um, uh, lower levels of lending and more security that's needed from those who are looking for lending. Um, and then Rick, just to, to plant one with you as well, if I may, um, when you start to uh, look at time to pay arrangements, um, and you're effectively dealing with HMRC. Um, is this is this sort of putting a black mark against your name uh, or the company name somewhere down the road? If it then comes to looking at lending or borrowing in maybe a couple of years, and you know, are you are you being flagged somewhere as as being um, on the on the naughty list? Okay, do you want me to start? Great, yeah, great Gary. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I, I think you, you, you're right. I mean, I suppose the, the way you ended that was almost the answer, to be honest, Julian. Um, I think the, the high streets in this particular sector, um, the, the credit appetite, I suspect, will start to contract, as you've, as you've highlighted. Uh, I think for, for a number of reasons, not, not only just the sector, I think, I think the, 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 the credit appetite on the high street is going to to retract quite a bit anyway just because of 
the the amount of probable or let's say um, uh, possible bad debt with the with the bounce back loan in particular and the C bills, there's an awful lot going on with their own portfolios. <clears throat> so that there will be an awful lot of, of of time and attention directed in that in that direction. I think with the with the hospitality space in general, I think there's a there's going to be an element of of obviously clear distress in that book as well. So I think a combination of things is going to mean it's going to be more difficult um, to get lending via a high street in that space. Um, the only way you'll do that is, is with a strong proposition, probably some additional uh, security that needs to be pledged, whether that's a personal guarantee or something something more tangible. Um, but I think what we're finding anyway is that you know that there are alternative lenders. Um, that, that can be a bit more creative and be a bit more flexible. I, th I think arguably though, and, 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 and being dead, dead honest, I think it's gonna be more a case of, you know, each individual application on its own merits. Um, but I think people need to consider that, that the, the risk and reward profile is gonna be gonna, gonna, gonna change quite significantly. You know, the, there's a couple of deals that we're looking at at the minute. It's a, a business in the, um, in the food space, um, you know, uh, uh, supplying to the uh, to, to hotels and restaurants, etc. So obviously, taking a bit of a dip. Um, we're, we're we're managing to get lender appetite, but that's because we've got some additional tangible security in the background. So we can work things being a little bit more flexible sometimes with an alternative funder. Uh, but I would just highlight, as you as you as you mentioned, you know, I, I think the the amount of security people need to accept that, that there are going to be changes, um, you know, in terms of, of what the appetite looks like in Furnace. I mean, we, we did a round table with, with a couple of the high streets, a um, couple of property lenders, a uh, couple of property brokers, a um, couple of alternative providers, and they were all sort of like indicating, this was, this was pre-roadmap and, and, and all sorts of different definitions, but uh, they, they all were indicating that there was, uh, there was going to be appetite and they weren't necessarily going to have many more um, restrictions on credit, but arguably for me, it's going to be the alternative lenders in that space rather than the high street. And and, and is, is your view still that that they will back people or they'll back management, and therefore it's that strength of management um, and that depth of management that's important? Or do you do you think do you think there's there's kind of perhaps slightly less weighting to that and more weighting towards security? Um. I think that there's always going to be a case for for is it is it a good management team and you could almost you could put put 2020 to bed you know ignore the financials on 2020 what did it look like in 2019 and what's going to look like tomorrow you know and I think at the very least when when Boris made the, the announcement this week what it what it does do now is give give people a bit of a clue as to as to when things can start to happen so you can have conversation with your with your customer base with your supplier base get yourselves ready and up and running and almost and almost it's like it's like planning for a new start business you know you, you look at the strength of that management team fantastic yeah you know we can we can look back to 2019 and beyond to say listen these guys know what they're doing ignore 2020 and 2021 is going to look like this because these are the conversations that I'm already having with, with my customers and my suppliers, et cetera. So the business is going to look like this. And I think the more the more you can you can firm up your assumptions, you know, whether it's 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 a strongly worded email, for instance, or it's it's you know, it's purchase orders, it's 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 letters of intent, that kind of thing that you can then start to to hang your hat on on your assumptions to say, well. It, it will return to this level in 29, you know, that, that we had in 2019. And, and then back to your point of, you know, th there is there is going to be focus clearly on, on, on security and on what that business is going to do. But how good is that management team? You know, if, if, you, if, you're, new, if you're a new entrant at this moment in time in, in, a, in a tough space, it's a very, very challenging proposition. You know, if, if you've got 25 years of worth of history, you know, fire it across to the right of the to the far side then of the uh, of the two bits of the equation there you've you've got an experienced management team that have, have been through massive dips previously and how well how did they get out of it you know they, they've got that skill set and that experience 
So I, th- I think, like I say, it's it's a case by case basis. The stronger the management team, that the more the, the the more strength you've got in that proposition. Uh, Gary, that, that's great. Thanks very much indeed. Really, really, really helpful. Um, Rick, can I can I come over to you from that other question? Yeah, yeah no problem. Yeah, I mean, I suppose looking at um, I suppose looking at the, the HMRC's view, you know, perception in it initially that's probably worthwhile looking at you know so the, the revenue will always look at the history of the, of the business and the compliance history have there been previous time to pay arrangements um, and they would always make the point that there has been previous arrangements so that that would tend to come in play you know play a factor in how long the client get you know in saying that though you know we have we have you know we always we often get clients coming to us saying i've just agreed a time to pay with a field force officer or with with someone in a certain team and actually I've been, I've been bullied into it. Or I've not really looked at, you know, and, and, uh, could, because that's, you know, that's tend, tend to be how, how, how these sort of situations arise. Or I've not really looked at my numbers and, and, and the forecast and what I actually can afford because I forgot I had to keep them current up to date. So us coming in then at a later date, even though they've got an agreement in place and actually saying to the revenue, we need to, we need to revisit this. We need actually extended terms beyond this. Because of, without the, without the uh, without some extension on the time to pay, this this arrangement is going to fail. So you know from that point of view, yeah, the revenue will always sort of look at the history. But if you get someone, if, if someone like ourselves are involved at a later date and independent, and we can review that, they, they are open to to, to uh, further arrangements. And then I suppose from the, the funders' point of view, again, sort of leaning into what we were saying before. You know, Gary, Gary and I, and going the. T- uh, getting Gary's team off and speak um, where the, the, the inquiries that lo- they're looking at the funder will want to see some sort of um, arrangement in place so if they've got arrears or if they've had historical arrears or time to pay that doesn't necessarily go against them um, what the funder want is just some comfort that there's a plan in place and actually that there's no enforcement action pending from the HMRC so you know that's that's where we get involved and we work in tandem with Gary and the team, just to make sure that the funder are comfortable with that that proposed lend, or the or the existing funder. Again, Gary will get in, get inquiries from existing clients where they've got uh, time to pay requirements, and the funder just wants some comfort that there's a plan in place. So it doesn't necessarily give you know it doesn't give them a black mark in in, in short. Where, where does HMRC sit in that respect with with any other debt? Then, if you've got if you've got a bank. Uh, if you've got a bank loan, for example, and you've you've entered in, into a time to pay arrangement with HMRC, who who takes priority? So, if it, are you saying it in terms of how they pay the pay the loan, or in terms of yeah, if 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 it, if, if you're struggling to repay, and, and people oh. will be struggling to repay, you know, I just I just wonder who takes priority in 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 the pecking <laughs> order there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously, uh, I mean, it comes back to cash management, really, doesn't it? Um, you know, from our point of view, if we if, if we go into a situation, um, if we know there's some arrears there, straight away we're picking the phone up to HMRC to put them on notice that there's a, there's a pending time to pay. Um, you know, if, if there's if there's issues repaying the loan, um, you know, we, we can we can speak to the funder and and. and either look at bearing the terms or, or or look to refinance it through 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 Gary's team. So it's it's down to it's down to cash management. We'll we'll see it a lot of the times where there'll be there'll be a, there'll be a raise in both areas of, of, of the loans or, or HMRC debt. So um I suppose it's it's down to it's it's down to how the management have dealt with it really. And but you know from our point of view it's just providing the right solution and Communication is the key, really, with everyone. Um, you know, all, all stakeholders. The, 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 as, as soon as the director buries, buries the head and or, or doesn't open the HMRC letters, that's where um, that's where things start to get a little bit messy. So um, that's where we sort of see it, really. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. I, I hope the question. Sorry, I don't know if there are others from other people. <laughs> Looks like looks like it was just mine. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. No I, mean, just, I guess just to dwell on that point, I suppose if there was from, from what I, from what I've understood from, from the conversations and just thinking about starting to bring things um, 
starting to bring things together uh, to the end. I suppose this is all about prudent management, isn't it? This is about this is about um, if a business needs support and a business needs to help and a business is in survival mode, then and there are going to be plenty of businesses that are, that will open up already in crisis, and therefore they're in survival mode. This is about taking positive, proactive steps and doing the right thing and 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 not being ashamed of, of a position, but actually saying, I need help, I need to get help, you know, because if I don't, there's a chance I'm gonna lose my livelihood, perhaps. Um, and that no doubt is, is a livelihood that people have taken time to build up. Absolutely. I guess it's about preemptive strikes. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. So look, um, with all of that, very, very, very happy to, to hand back to you, Joanne, if there was any sort of summary or final comment that, that you wanted to make or, or um, or to bring everything together just from just from uh, Elena Curtis perspective. It's just to reiterate Julian um, essentially that we're here to help and the sooner that if you have got concerns pick up the phone drop us an email because the sooner the better then we've got more time to put procedures in place um, and to have open communication with the various different channels so yeah, no silly questions. Please don't be embarrassed about asking asking anything um, because we've got a team of experts and you can bet your bottom dollar that they've all heard it before in either a different format. So yeah, just pick up the phone, communicate. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks very Thank much you. indeed. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Claire just, Claire, just worth mentioning perhaps uh, who we have on on the next session coming up in uh, in a couple of weeks. Indeed, yeah, we've got we've got the lovely Kevin and Martin from Trident Hospitality talking mm -hmm. to us about um, what we all need to know about sales, and then we've got Andrew from Green Gauge talking about the uh, talking about talking to us about sustainability, um, so, and that's on the eleventh of March at ten o'clock, and at eleven o'clock it should be live on Eventbrite, ready to book. Brilliant stuff. Great. Well, look, thank you very, very much to Joanne, to Donna, to, to Gary and to Rick. Thank you for your time um, and some very, very valuable uh, insight uh, into all of this timely uh, topic. Um, I think that's where we'll, we'll bring it to a close. Um, we'll look forward to seeing, hopefully, um, hopefully uh, you again on the 11th. Um, and at that point, a final thank you. Thank you to thank all. You. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very thank much. You.